all and also with you.
third chapter of Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. The book of Jonah is a comedy starring a reluctant prophet who is given a one-sentence message. Nineveh will be destroyed in 40 days. Much to Jonah's dismay, the people of Nineveh repented. The point of the story is to get to the reader to wrestle with the question, of whom should God have mercy? The reader. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up. Go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, three days' walk across. Jonah began to go to the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out. Forty days more and Nineveh will overthrow him. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone great and small put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no herd or flock, shall taste anything. They shall not be fed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to the Lord, and shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may repent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Here ends the reading. Today's psalm is Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12, found in your bulletin. For God alone, I wait in silence. Truly, my, God, my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall never be shaken. In God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. For those of high degree are but a fleeing breath. Those of low estate cannot be trusted. Place on the scales together, they weigh even less than a breath. But no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. The wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it, that power belongs to God. Set that love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay all according to their deeds. The second lesson is from the seventh chapter of 1 Corinthians. Verses 29 through 31. Paul does not disapprove of marriage or any other human institutions. He does, however, want Christians to live in the present in fever anticipation of God's future, which now, which even now has drawn to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The reading. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time is growing short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world 
is passing away. Here ends the read. Right? 
But we always run to God and ask for help. And he'll always be there. We don't ever have to run away. Okay? Let's pray. Hold our hands. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. We are so thankful. We are so thankful. That you always give us. That you always give us. A second chance. A second chance. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> Almighty and gracious God, we come to you again and again and again, seeking your forgiveness for the sins we repented of, confessed, received forgiveness, and then we come again seeking forgiveness for the same things that we were guilty of. You as an abundant, gracious God, you forgive us, clean us up, restore us, and gift us with that <coughs> word of grace, mercy, compassion. Every time we come to you again, at this moment. Convict us, convert us, and consecrate us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from the triune God be with us all. Amen. The week began for me highlighting the word fishing. Not F-I-S-H-I-N-G, but P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G. And yes, it was on the internet. The theme that we discussed today, if you look at the cover of your bulletins, where Jesus invites, follow me, I will make you fish for people is a promise, is an invitation of grace. Mark first chapter is full of the word immediately. Mark, the evangelist is in a hurry to preach the gospel, proclaim the good news. Begins the whole gospel with that term, euangelion, good news. When Jesus begins his ministry, once again, he says, the good news, the kingdom of God is near. Repent, believe, and receive that good news. <coughs> the whole package of what and why Jesus came into the world is spelled out in that verse. When Jesus calls them, the context is also different. The context is that King Herod got John the Baptist arrested. We know that King Herod was in fact a fan of John because he loved to listen to what John the Baptist preached and said, yet he had to accept, he had, he felt he had to obey the vow that he himself gave in front of all those princes to say to Herodias' daughter, ask whatever you want and I will give you. And you know that that story concluded with beheading of John the Baptist. So in this particular story that we start today, Mark, first chapter where Jesus calls Simon, Andrew, James, and his brother, we find that John is arrested. What good news and what big goal do you have to ask people to follow you to say, this is what you will get 
if you follow me. This is the best price. This is the best thing that can happen to you. That's how people usually sell their product. Jesus, in this context, where powers, abusive powers, imagine that they have their right and they have complete authority and who think they can play God, it is in that context that Jesus invites people. Like last time, when we listened to the story of Samuel, when Samuel is called just a child, we already get a sense of what God's criteria always is. God has to choose Moses. And Moses immediately comes out with his excuse. Sorry. Aaron comes out with his excuse. Sorry. I had this stammering speech. Mm, look for another. So ways in which we can go in the opposite direction of God's call is not new in the Bible. Yet we know that God's criteria for calling the ordinary does not depend on their own qualities, but God calls the ordinary and makes them extraordinary. Extraordinary disciples of God. We find in this gospel narrative that those God Jesus calls are not owners. You know, they are mending their boats if you <coughs> listen to the gospel reading. Torn nets. And I was also looking at imagining what the plight or what the situation would have been if the sons were at work and you find Zebedee the father and the other men who were there to help him in that fishing abandoned by the two sons to say no Jesus has called us and therefore we will be on our way you find that God's purpose in calling each one of us does not depend on who we are what we are but only the promise that lingers on forever and that is when God calls God equips when God equips God empowers and therefore we become extraordinary in the name of God and by the grace of God Jonah's story Jonah we find of course as the message was preached already reading that story to the kids the first two chapters is almost like a book on its own chapters 3 and 4 are like another book we find Jonah he of course after his being reprimanded and what a reprimand to spend three days in the belly of the fish says all right I'll go but just look at that introduction that place that Jonah had to go to Nineveh was a three days journey three days journey to walk across that big was the city yet you find Jonah going just a day's walk which probably means he just reached the margins of that city and preaches in Hebrew in the original a five worded sermon just five words in the original in English translation we make it eight words in that sentence that was the most powerful sermon the shortest sermon but also the most powerful sermon ever recorded because what happens after 
after preaching and proclamation of the word, after those words are sown as seeds in the minds of people, hearts of people, the work of the word is God. The seed of the word works with God's own love, compassion and justice. Let's take a look at the role of the king. That three verses, six, seven, eight and nine, four verses are actually missing in your bulletin at the back of the bulletin and therefore we make sure that those four verses are included in your bulletin. So you get a larger picture, the complete picture. Define this king ready not only to be an example to the community, <clears throat> himself roaming his robe and sitting in the ashes, put on sackcloth, and then demands everyone including the animals. I mean, what do those poor animals have to do with the sin of humanity? Yet, the animals also participate in that process of repentance, remorse, confession, pleading for forgiveness. And that act of confession, repentance and believing in God's grace is everything about salvation. Everything about salvation. You find God changed God's mind. Sometimes we think to change one's mind is so human a thing. Only human beings can change their minds. But when we read the gospel, we read God's word, we know that God's name is grace. The unconditional, unlimited, universal grace of God is non-negotiable. And that is why I love to wear this stole on such a day when I have to preach on universal grace of God. All colors, diversity, inclusion, part of God's grace right from the time of creation. Imagine how boring it would have been, it would be, if everybody looked the same. All we need to do is just look at our own thumbprints. So unique. As if God is watching only over you all the time. That's unique an experience, yet this is so common. All over the world, people singing, praising God, thanking God. For watching over them. How do we understand this uniqueness and commonness together? Jonah's story puts that message across so powerfully. The whole gospel, the whole Bible, the whole scripture is summed up in this story of Jonah. God's grace God changing the mind. And when Jesus was asked, what is, give us a sign. We want to know whether we can connect the dot between you, God, us, promise, salvation, Messiah. There's only one story Jesus recalls. Gives Jonah as a sign. And we read about that in the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 12. So we know, for God, who loved us into existence, Jesus is the story. Jesus is the love story. We are going to reflect. 
reflect on that in the following weeks when we read John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that God gave Jesus his only son. So, Jonah's story that Jesus recalls is also continuous with that image of another story that Jesus recalls. Let me uh, refer to that. You know, in Luke chapter 15, in those three beautiful parables that Jesus says of the lost coin, the lost sheep, and the prodigal son, it is in a context when the tax collectors and scribes say, Jesus must be an odd person. Sinner himself, perhaps, because he keeps company only with the sinners. And it is in response to that word and mumbling of the people, Jesus tells these three parables. I would like us to look at the image of that father Jesus portrays in that story of the prodigal son. Where? The son has sinned where the son had given up everything for the sake of money, for the sake of pleasure and the world, forgot about relationship, forgot about anything and everything about God. But when he comes to himself, what does it mean to come to oneself? It is like looking into yourself as a new person, as a third person, and saying, realizing, I have come so far away from God. I have sinned against God. I have sinned against my family, my siblings, my parents. And when that happens, We read in that story again. The father does not wait for the son to come and confess. Say those words, I'm sorry. But that, that father in the story runs. Actually is waiting, waiting. And then runs, hugs. And doesn't matter what the story is, what the son has to say. Even before the son asks for forgiveness, the father is already merciful. Where do you think Jesus must have got that description of God's grace? If not from the story of Jonah, if not from the story of this king, who, wait, who does not wait, he takes that leadership. He is, he plays a very exemplary role. Leadership matters. How we are truthful to God, open our hearts and minds to God, and follow Jesus' way. The message for us today is this. Cosmic grace. God's utter love and grace for the whole world. God's costly grace in Jesus. Giving us Jesus who gave up his life on the cross for the sake of us all. Cosmic grace, costly grace, and of course, clearly bringing us all together in that throne of grace. When we come forward to receive communion today, we will once again taste that cosmic, costly love, costly grace that God spared for us. The peace of God be with us always. Amen.
Father, and Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered in the cross of Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. God, our rock and our deliverance, do not let your church be shaken. We trust you never abandon your promises to the most vulnerable among us. Give your church wisdom and empathy in its varied ministries. God of grace, receive, receive our prayer. God, our hope and refuge, you place the fish in the sea Guide our care of oceans and all creatures that live in them. Hold us accountable for actions that endanger water sources and the people who depend on them. God of grace, receive our prayer. God who <laughs> proclaims judgment and offers mercy. Be a model to the leaders of our nation and the world. As they lead, may they follow in your way of justice and truth. God of grace, receive our prayer. God who cares for the suffering, care for survivors of assault and sexual abuse, and sustain all who minister to them. Keep safe any who live under threat of violence, <coughs> those living in poverty, and any among us who are ill or in pain. We pray at this time for those who seek our prayers for their healing, health, and comfort. We remember their names aloud or silently in our hearts. God of grace, receive our prayer. God of resurrection and new life. As the first disciples shared the good news, empower us and this faith community to be open to your call. When we are uncertain of your call, assure us. When we have strayed from your ways, redirect us. God of grace, receive our prayer. God who holds the saints against your tender bosom, we trust you welcome them into your care. Comfort those who grieve, even as we place our hope in your salvation. We especially lift up before you the Ware family, who still grieve, we affirm our faith in you as God, the Emmanuel, 
who is with us, close to us, always. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table, that we receive what we seek, and follow your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Give her a 
Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory now and forever. Amen. Let us receive the blessing. God who names you, Jesus Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. God. Yeah.